So we would need to download the software. Uh, it downloads. It should most likely download to your desktop. You will see a file called WordPress. It's got a little zipper on it. It's a zip file. When you double click it, you'll see a folder called WordPress. Again, this should have been already done for us. So if you're having trouble, I'll help you. But what we need to do with this is my handout is saying we've got the WAMP software. We need the WordPress software. We need to put this WordPress folder into our WAMP folder. I'll help you in just a moment. Let me finish my thought here. We need to copy or move this WordPress folder. And be careful because there's inside the zip file, inside the zip folder, there's the regular WordPress folder. We need to move this WordPress folder, as my handout says, in computer, C drive, WAMP folder, www folder. The folder in the zip, yes. So on my computer, local disk C, WAMP folder, www folder, I need to move the WordPress folder into the www folder. Let's make sure we get that done, then we'll proceed. Yeah. All right, anyone else ready to go on?
there any any last person? So what my handout is saying is that uh, you need the software, you need the WordPress software, which we had to go download. I thought it, I thought they had it ready for us, and then we had to copy the word that WordPress folder. That's the software. We had to copy that WordPress folder into this specific folder, the WW folder, in the WAMP folder, in the C drive. We saw a little while ago when we had that WAMP window open, it said we had no projects. But we just put a WordPress project into WAMP. WAMP is the virtual server that will allow us to have a website. So that was step one. Step two, set up a database. WordPress is modern software that relies on a database. Everything about our site is going to be stored in a database. The design of our website, our products, the prices, our users, their addresses, all of that stuff gets saved in a database. A database is just a collection of data. So we need to create a database and connect our WordPress software to the database and then we've got a WordPress site ready. Yes, we do have to do a little bit of behind the scenes, behind the curtain stuff. But like I said, going with WordPress.org, we need to do some of this ourselves. But once we've got these steps done, then we've got a site ready to go. A full featured powerful site. And we're going to do this in variations every time we come in. Uh, we're going to do something like this again next time. Not every time. We don't want to start over every single time. But the first two times, we'll start over. Then after that, we'll just keep using our site over and over. I don't want to start over the third and fourth and fifth times. But we'll start over the first couple of times. So what we need to do is to create a database. And this is saying, go to this address. Okay, that means like, you open your web browser and go to the address. HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash php my admins right there on step two sub step a localhost slash php my admin handout number two step number two What this scary screen is all about is creating and deleting and managing databases. Now we're only going to need to do this once per day, per, per project. Uh, besides this, we never really have to look behind the curtain to see what's going on. We just have to connect the database and WordPress software and then we've got a, a site. So my handout is saying go to this address. Um, if it asks you for a password, the username is root and the password is blank, it's nothing. It didn't ask us, so we're okay. At the top nav bar, click on databases. So there's a button at the top, click on databases. We currently have these databases that exist. Info schema and etc. But we need to create our own database. So in the create database box, add the name WordPress, click create. Notice I wrote it here lowercase. This is case sensitive. If we're on this screen and we're about to create a database and I call it WordPress like that, that if I don't use that exact name later on on my next step, it won't work. So my handout says WordPress lowercase. One word. WordPress. Are you there? I'm sorry. This is handout number two. Step number two. I, and then at the top you click databases. I went to the local host and then that's where I got the background. Yeah, like there. I'm saying right here. Localhost uh -huh. slash PHP my admin. Yes, and then on the step right here. It says at the top navbar, click So we're going to click, uh, we're going to type the name WordPress, make sure you spelled it right, and then click Create. You'll get a pop-up that says Database WordPress has been created, and you can confirm it there on the left side because you will see here we've got the list of our databases, and one of them is now WordPress. So 
So that was step two. Step three. Now we need to go to the address, localhost slash WordPress. And we've got a bunch of little steps here to connect the software with the database. So we're back on the web browser, I'm going to delete that. And the address is http colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress. I didn't copy it over. So when you go to localhost slash WordPress, what it wants to do is it wants to open the folder of that WordPress software that we put into the WW folder. So going to the address localhost slash WordPress is going into that folder in the WW folder. See right there. So it's saying basically we're going to set up WordPress. We can set it up in many languages. That's another great feature of WordPress, which is that um, it can be multilingual. If you need to sell products in English, Spanish, Tagalog, Hebrew, uh, Urdu, every language basically, we can create multilingual uh, WordPress. Yes? How did you open the databases for that? Well, right here on my handout, I have that you're going to go to the address on your web browser, localhost slash WordPress. So if you copied your WordPress folder into the WW folder, this should work. So then what I'm doing here is I'm going to click continue. What this asks for is a variety of of pieces of information which are on the handout. We need a database. We just created one a moment ago. We need a username. It's on my handout. We need a password. It's on my handout. So let's just click let's go. And so here it's asking what's the name of your database. Now it's not that it knew that we made it's not that it knew we made a database called WordPress is that that's the default. So if you have called yours my site, if you made a database called my site, this is not going to work obviously because it's saying the name of your database WordPress. But my handout says, okay, your database is WordPress. What does my handout say is your username? Root, exactly. So it says right here, username root, lowercase. What's the password? Blank. Nothing. Literally nothing. Don't write blank. It's nothing. It's empty. That's on the next screen. Uh, password, empty. Database host, we leave that alone, but notice localhost is what we've been navigating this whole time. Localhost. If eventually I was doing this on my real website, victor.com, the database host, where is your database, would be at victor.com. We don't, we don't have that. We have a local host. We have a local virtual fake server, local host. <coughs> so don't change that. And table prefix, don't worry about that. It's fine. Click Submit. At this point, we might have an error, or it might say it's run the install. Again, we have a lot of different uh, variety of skills sets of different people. Again, of course, I'll help everyone, but let me just go through it at this pace and see if we can get it done, and then we'll do a little help. But I'm going to click Run the Installer. Remember, if you help your neighbors, that's great, but keep it at a reasonable volume, please. If that screen worked, then it takes you here to welcome. Now it's going to ask you for a few more things. My handout says, add a site title, anything you want. So I'm going to make a fictional company called Victor's Bakery. I had an error, and I went back just to make sure 
And the password is the password is empty. Oh, nothing. nothing. So I erase the password. Mm -hmm. All right. So then here on my info username, a moment ago it was asking us for the information to connect to the database. But here now it's asking us to create a username and password to log into when we add a product, when we add a picture, when we you know, charge the credit card. It's asking us for our, our main administrative information. This is the one we're going to use over and over. That one about root and blank, we only use it one time when we set ourselves up. This one we're going to use over and over. And I have suggestions of what to write here in my handout. You can put whatever you want. But if you put whatever you want, I don't know what you wrote. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to log in and you need help, I don't know what you wrote. That's why in my handout I have the example perhaps use admin and perhaps use a password of password. <laughs> so on username I'm going to put admin and on password I'm going to put password. It's not going to like that terrible password, <laughs> but I'm going to tell it, confirm that I'm using the weak password. Again, you can put anything you want. This is not a real address. This is not a real website. No one can see this. Only yourself. When, it, when we take this home with us on our flash drive, only you can use it. Only you can access it. So in my case, it doesn't matter that my password is password. No one else will see it. The first one doesn't matter, right? Site title? That's right. This email here could be a real email address or not. I'm going to make one at victor at victor.com. Because, again, it's not a real address. It's not a real website. If it was a real website, I would want my real email there in case I forgot my password. Then it would help me retrieve it. This is not a real one, so it won't, it won't work. So on my step three, sub step I, it says turn off allow search engines to index this site. This is not a real website. Google can't find it, Yahoo can't find it, Bing can't find it, AOL can't find it. So I'm going to say turn that right there, turn it off. Don't let the search engines find you. It's not a real website yet. Yes? But eventually, if you do take it in, Make it yeah, eventually when we make this live, we will want to turn this off so that it works, and we'll get back to that later because it's one of the steps that we need to do when we finally go live to the real internet. After all of this, I'll click Install WordPress. Again, there might be errors here and there. As soon as I'm done here, I'll help people. Let's see if we can get it done following my steps. Of course, everything that I'm saying, I'm not making it up. It's on my handout. Mm -hmm. Everything that I've been saying is on the handouts. Eventually I get a success. If you don't, again, I'll help you in just a moment. But what I want to do then is click Login. Notice my handout says visit your site at that address and get the login screen at that address. So we'll be accessing those links over and over throughout the course. These steps that we're doing here, yes they are tricky, yes you're not used to them, yes you've ne never done it before, but guess what? Pat yourself on the back. You are a database administrator now. You are a server administrator. You created a database. You created a server. If you got to this point, it'll ask you to log in with your username or email and password. And if you followed my handout, username is admin, password is password. If you made up your own thing, hopefully you wrote it down or you remember it, because I don't know what it is. And so let's pause at this point. If all of this worked, you should eventually get to the dashboard. Does anyone need any help at this point? I have the WordPress 
Okay, so again, um, are you sure you want to be the next Amazon? Because now we're doing it this way, and yes, this is the harder way. Yes, if you go to Bluehost or GoDaddy or host sponsors, they're going to say one-click WordPress installation. Yes, that is true, but all of that stuff is not free. Now, what we're doing here is we're creating a virtual server. We're creating a development environment. Um, my syllabus mentions that, but let me make some notes here. Remember, I'm making notes. So in our class, uh, we're using a virtual server. 
this is our development environment. No one can access this site except you sitting at your computer. The good thing about this is you can work on your site, you can uh, add to it, you can mess it up, you can do, uh, you know, you can get, you can get, uh, uh, you know, used to this, and then eventually upload it and have it real. But right now it's development. We do this all the time in my company for clients because the default is that when you buy your space online, most things that you do on WordPress will show up automatically. When you make a change, everyone will see it. When you're moving pictures around and all of that, by default, people could see it. They could see as you're setting up your site, and you might not want to let people see that. So an alternative is you work on you work offline, you work on WAMP, or if you're on the Mac, MAMP. You work on your own computer, you get your site working perfectly, and then we'll talk about putting it up online, putting it up so everyone can then see it when it's ready, not while you're working on it and stumbling through it. So yes, what we've done here is complicated and such, and we'll do it several times together, and you're welcome to watch the videos over and over and ask help and read my handouts. You're welcome to do all of that, and as we get used to all of this, it will become easier. And this is really the preferred way to do things because we have the full power of WordPress here. WordPress.com is limited. WordPress.org is full featured, but it requires more tech savviness, more setup. Uh, but that's what the class is about. Once we get all of this under our belts, then we're going to start to add advanced themes and looking at uh, custom coding, perhaps, and e commerce, of course, all that great stuff. So if we got up to this point, we should see the dashboard. And what we want to do is get used to that with WordPress, we have, we have the, the front end and the back end. We have the dashboard and the site. The dashboard is what only you will see as the administrator. You will see here your products and your sales and your low inventory, all of that. But what do regular people see? Hover your mouse over the name of your site on the top left, and you should see Visit Site. Click Visit Site, and this is what people will see. Kind of a boring looking site, but this is your site. Hello World, Victor's Bakery, whatever you call it. If this were Victor.com, this is what people would see. It's on localhost, it's in WAMP server, no one sees this except myself on this computer. If I want to go back to the dashboard, you hover your mouse over the name of your site again and click Dashboard. So we have to get used to that. I'm going to say, let's visit site, which means hover here, click Visit Site, view your site. I want to say, let's go to the dashboard. That means hover here, click Dashboard. Shortcut is simply click the name of it, and that takes you back and forth too. So we need to see both sides of the site, what the front end is, what people see, and what the back end, back end is, which is what we see as the administrators. So let me show you uh, one of the most impressive things about WordPress, and then we'll, we'll talk about all of the aspects. But right now, our site on visit site is very boring. This is the basic default theme, black and white, a column on the side, it's kind of boring. WordPress, I just showed you Texcoco, I showed you Elsa Valencia, I showed you other ones. WordPress can be a very visually interesting looking site. And that's because those other sites have different themes. To change the design of your site, it's a theme. change your site design, pick a new theme. Let's try that. I don't like that boring design, I want to pick a different design. Go back to the dashboard if you're not already there. So you go to the dashboard. There's a lot of windows here, we'll be talking about them all. But for the moment, just to show this off, let's hover over Appearance and click Themes. Let's change the, the theme in the Appearance section. Appearance themes. 
in built in, we've got a theme called 2016, 2015, 2014. Let's see what 2015 design looks like. So hover your mouse over 2015 and click activate. And then visit site. So hover over 2015, click activate, and then visit site. So my content is still there, hello world, and the name of my site is still there, and other stuff, other than uh, the other content is still there. The design has changed, now I've got a sidebar on the left mm -hmm. instead of the right. Uh, I've got these different buttons here, slightly different design, still pretty boring looking, but different layout, different theme. Let's go look at the other built-in theme. Go back to Dashboard. Go back to Appearance Themes. And this time we'll look at 2014. Notice the preview there does make it look nicer than it often really ends up in, as just like when you see that really tasty hamburger on TV and when you buy it it's squashed and the meat's falling out. Here they make it look really nice when it's got content. But let's check out 2014, it looks really nice. Hover over 2014 and click Activate. And then Visit Site. There's my Hello World content again. The sidebar is black, the text is a little bit different size. I have this like search button at the top right corner, Sample Page. Click on sample page, maybe, and you see sample content, just stuff, different design. Those are the three built-in ones. But we have a whole world, thousands, hundreds of thousands of designs to choose from. If we were at WordPress.com, we only have about a hundred designs to choose from. But we're, if, if, at Word, if we're at WordPress.org, we have thousands of designs to choose from. Let's check those out. Go back to Dashboard. Remind me again, where do I change my theme? Appearance. Appearance. Appearance and then themes. And we've only got three. What about if we click Add New? Near the top, you've got the button. Appearance themes. Add new theme. Let's click Add New. Here it's showing 15 featured themes. These are looking nice. We've got popular, latest, etc. We'll look at those in a moment. But just looking at featured, maybe you have the same as mine or not. But I see one called Sale Junction. We do have a preview button, and I don't think preview is that useful because preview often shows you the sites in the most perfect way possible. It doesn't show it to you exactly with your content. It's very easy to just try out any of these themes. You can try as many themes as you want. You, ha you can have one active at a time, but you can try as many as you want. So any one of these. If you see Sale Junction, I'm going to click Install. It, that one hasn't been set up on my Victor's Bakery yet. So any one that you like, hover over and click Install. This is going to connect back to the WordPress.org mothership. It's going to download it, unpackage it, etc., install it, and then you have to remember, and I'll remind us, but you have to remember to activate the theme. One theme can be active at a time. So whichever one you got, click activate and then visit site. So what it's really doing, preview shows you what it could be. Yeah. And the install is just showing you the columns and the placement of the main items. Because we don't have very much on our site, when we install any of these themes, it doesn't quite look like the picture because they've set it up the most, as the most set up. Uh, so it's still up to us, and we'll go throughout the course. It's still up to us to figure out how we need to set things up. In my case, I install this theme, and right away I get a nice big picture. I need to figure out how to put my picture. I see some text here. There's the name of my site at the top, links at the top. There's my Hello World down there. A little branding at the bottom, Sale Junction by Ink Themes. So this looks a lot nicer.
what else? Let me play with another one. Go back to dashboard, appearance themes. We'll go back to add new. Maybe take a look at popular. If you look at popular, there's a whole world to choose from here. There's 2,000 now to choose from. That one looks nice. Sydney, spacious, etc. Well, these this is the this is what makes WordPress great is that there's so much customization to it. There's so many themes, plugins, widgets, etc. And so it's just simply a matter of browsing here and finding a good one and clicking install. I do have to say though, we have free themes, and we have premium themes. So premium being a code word for the opposite of free. Uh, these free themes, I would say often are like 90% complete. They have lots of features, but maybe like 90% of all the possible features. And there might be a theme that you really like. It's a great design and it has all these features. You like the columns and the layout and such. But a couple of those features are not, are not active until you pay for the premium theme, the premium version. So this is a huge range of prices from $5 80 to $85 and above. It, it really ranges. And so you can get by with the free one most likely. There's a lot of great free themes. But there are some themes out there with more features that you might want to invest in. And so there's a whole world of theme uh, designers out there. Uh, people, you know, some uh, high school student making a WordPress theme or a design studio making a WordPress theme. <coughs> Um, a variety of people with abilities and skills and experience and skill. Um, just browsing here, you know, 2010 looks okay, but then Athena looks really nice and uh, Tortuga looks nice too. This is just a variety of independent, they're usually independent designers um, putting out these themes. Yes. I find it very frustrating because what you see on the picture is not what you get. That's very, very true. It's frustrating frustrating that oftentimes the picture looks better than your own sight. And all the time. <laughs> yes. Uh, the problem, yes, is that they want to really show off the best of it. So oftentimes with a theme there's also a manual that comes with it mm -hmm. that explains how to set it up and how to properly use it. Uh, so it's really add your content to our theme and learn how our theme works. And somewhere there, most likely under appearance, there'll be a button to go read the manual and such. Okay. Yes. yes. Can you differentiate when you need to pay for it? Sometimes when you're browsing around here, you can differentiate because there will be a little dollar symbol, uh, and then it's the paid one. But more commonly, you look at a theme, you like it, you install it, and then it will tell you, we've also got a paid version you might be interested in. So actually, there are three versions. There's the freemium version, freemium, which is a mixture of the two. You get one that might be like 75% complete. Pay 20 bucks, and then you get the whole 100%. So that's the third kind. And I'm seeing that, doing this for years, I'm seeing that much more commonly now. You can get a theme that looks really well, it's missing a couple of features, do I want to pay $20 and get them all? $20 not so bad, one time fee. Or I say, no, I'm fine with the free features, and, I, and that's fine. Another question over here? Same question. Like, you want to know if you want to know? It all says install, install, install. install. Yeah, so I'm seeing that. Free, right? They're all pretty much free. So what I would do is 
if you hover over and you see details, click on details, oftentimes here they'll also tell you what's what the theme has and features and probably somewhere there depending because these are all different people designing these so probably somewhere here it'll tell you or get our get our paid version for X dollars yes um, if you choose anyone for free and the features uh, that you don't have but you know how to change the code mm -hmm. can you do that or is that illegal? No, you can. That's a that's a pretty good advanced question. Let me touch on it a little bit and we'll get to it deeper because all of this right here is going to lead me into talking a little bit about, in my opinion, three levels of WordPress. This is something that we do for clients. This is something for you to think about. Level one is find a free or premium theme and customize minimally. Customize minimally. Have you noticed that when we've ever, whenever we've got a theme installed, we've also got customize. We'll look at it a little deeper later, but here's where you go for your theme to maybe change the background color, change the picture. Everyone's is going to be different, but every theme has a basic customization screen. This is the first level of WordPress find a free theme or a paid theme and customize it because if I found 2016 and used it so did a hundred other people a thousand other people well let's say I'm gonna pay fifty dollars for that theme someone else probably has fifty dollars and they paid as well so especially if I go look at the popular section I really like this one of popular so did a thousand other people so a thousand other websites look exactly the same as mine if I go to customize I have some ability to customize it to make it different from other people. That's level one. Level two, again, find a free or premium theme. I'll just do dot, 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 and customize heavily. That means every theme, even the free ones, have this screen right here. Let's take a quick look at this. Let's click Editor. What that does is it pulls back the safety blanket of WordPress mm -hmm. and here's all the code. Your website is made out of all of this code and this is probably lots and lots and lots of lines of scrolling of code. And that's one file in addition to this file and this file and this file and this file. So this one theme is made out of all of these files and all of this code. And you are free to completely edit this. So even with a free or paid theme, you can go in here and say, oh, I don't like that this, if you know this code, I don't like that this is one pixel. I want it to be 1.75 pixels. So you can go in, pull back the curtain of any theme, and continue to customize it. Because everyone's using the Sydney theme, but no one else is using it where I change it to be 25 pixels right here. Where did you click on it? On the left side, you have editor, appearance, and then editor. Question. No. Okay. So, if anyone has any experience in HTML, if you've taken our other classes, our front end web development classes, our Dreamweaver classes, all of that knowledge still applies in WordPress because WordPress shields you from all of this, but deep down, a WordPress site is an HTML site, CSS, and all of that. So, quick show of hands how many of you have any experience in HTML? A few people. Anyone experience, has experience in CSS? Three people. Any experience in JavaScript? Okay. Any experience in PHP? All right, so most of us here don't have experience in these programming languages, but behind the scenes, behind the scenes, WordPress is made of yes. HTML plus CSS, plus JavaScript, plus PHP. And you're free to edit your, your theme any way you want. It doesn't go against any law or rule or contract or anything. Mm -hmm. I just want to add, you can edit it through the editor. The editor blocks it. You can also put through the functions for the blocks. 
It's a little bit more advanced, definitely, but you do have the ability to go around most things if you know where to look. Question here? I Third. Stumbled, I stumbled across where it brings up the paid stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, we'll be touching on that as well because premium themes are valuable. That could be a way to go. Maybe I will pay $50 and I will get a nice looking theme that has a lot of customization and I'm done. Level one. Level two, maybe take that premium theme and still kind of change it up a little bit. Level three of WordPress is start from scratch with all code. So that one's easy. All you need to do is be a pro in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP and make your own designs completely how you want that no one else has. But I just said you need those four programming languages basically to make a WordPress theme. So for us, when we get hired, my company, when we get hired to do this, we tell them all of these things here. We're going to make your WordPress site. It's going to have all of these features. And now we have three options. We have that you, the client, and us, the company, will sit down, we'll browse some themes, we'll recommend this one, maybe that one, it has these features. Do you want the free one? Do you want the premium one? Because that is one level of cost to the client. We say, okay, we're going to start with a free theme or a paid theme, but then we're going to customize it so that no one else has your design. Because the point of this is some people want to buy a car and buy a few of those options. I want leather seats. I want heated seats. No, I want instead, let's talk about houses. I want to buy that house as house as is, turnkey. I want to walk into the house, maybe I'll put my own paint and curtains, level one. Or I want to buy a fixer-upper. It's at a certain neighborhood, the foundation is great, the plumbing is great, I just want to put in a new room, level two. Level three, I'm going to go buy that plot of land, bulldoze it, and make my own house. So these are the three levels of WordPress. And when we deal with a client, we tell them that the higher level you go here, the more customized you will be, yes, but the more expensive it will go. Actually, it goes a little bit more like this. So if we get hired, we tell them this right away. We tell them these are all the levels. We can make a fully customized site for you, but it will be much more expensive than the other two levels. And we, we even dissuade them. We say, don't hire us to do level three for you. You're going to spend a lot of time just to make the design of your site, where you also need to spend time on and money on SEO and social media and your content and your photography, the rest of your company. So when we get hired, we recommend level two. Let's get a free or premium theme and then customize it. That's what Texcoco is. I can look up what theme that is later and you can download it yourself. It won't look exactly like ours because we went in to this editor and we customized a bunch of code. And the point of that is, well, why don't you just start from the beginning? No, because this is like taking that fixer-upper house. It's already got the two stories. It's already got the three rooms. But now we're going to open up that room by knocking out a wall and making it a loft. We don't want to start over with a brand new house on an empty plot. That's level three. That's the most expense. Yes. The guy that owns that company, Texcoco, does he make his own changes if he wants to change something, or do you have to go? Does he call you guys to do it? It depends on what needs to be changed. If if that if the client knows the code, they can if they want. But as we saw, saw from the show of hands here, like two percent of people know the code. Most of us don't know this, don't want to know this, because if we're editing this and we change it and we miss one wrong command, we could break the whole site. So the client has the ability to go into here and edit it, sure, but they stick around on these the, the pretty safe WordPress interface. And we give the client, of course, it's their, it's their site, we give them the ability to, to log in and make changes here in the safe interface instead of the editor, because that could break everything. Uh, so you can further explore that on your. We'll talk about themes in more detail later.
the WordPress is really nice because then you can go and change your con change your design, and your content still follows you easily. In the old days, if you were doing it via Dreamweaver or plain HTML, it was very difficult to change designs. You had to you had to know much more of this code, and if you make a change here and that conflicts with some code elsewhere, your site doesn't look well, doesn't look good, or it breaks. With WordPress, you can, with the click of a button, jump between designs. Pretty much. Because what WordPress is, WordPress is a CMS. Content Management System. This is the fancy way of saying it's database driven, it's database powered. That anguish that we had early on about creating the database and all of that, that database is storing our design and our products and our username and password and all of that. And there's a little record, there's a little field in the database. Imagine this is a database. There's a spot in the database that says theme equals 2016. I go in here to the pretty safe interface and click activate 2014 and the database changes. Theme equals 2015 and everything else stays the same. That's how we can jump from design to design. So let's uh, take one more break just to make sure we're all in the right spot. Maybe you can play with themes for a little bit. Uh, we'll take a 10 minute break. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print handout 2 or 3. When we come back, we'll explore some other aspects of WordPress. And that'll be at 842.